Welcome to Variant. We love comics more than I wish Marvel kept in humans a movie instead of making it a TV series. I'm your host, Ares Quinones. Real quick, we want to remind you guys that we're keeping links for Team Rubicon and the Red Cross in the episode's description for any of you who can and want to donate in the relief effort. With Hurricane Harvey creating immense damage in Houston a couple of weeks ago, and Hurricane Irma demolishing several islands in the Caribbean and then hitting Florida just this past weekend, those affected can use all the help we can offer them. So we encourage you to join us in donating as much as we can toward relief. As for today's episode, yeah. Yes, The Inhumans was initially supposed to be a Marvel Studios film, which I and many of you definitely would have preferred. Nevertheless, the first episode of the Now Inhumans TV series premiered in IMAX theaters earlier this month, and the show will be connected to the MCU much like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and all the Netflix Marvel series. While the reviews haven't been good so far at all, the first season officially kicks off on September 29th on ABC. And The Inhumans are a cool and important piece of the Marvel Universe, so today we're going to take a look at their comic book history. The Inhumans were created by none other than Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, with the characters first hitting the pages of a comic book in Fantastic Four issue 45 in December of 1965. However, it is worth mentioning that Inhumans members Medusa and Gorgon appeared earlier on in issues 36 and 44 of the same series. The Inhumans in a nutshell are the result of Kree experimentation on a group of Neanderthals using Terrigen Mist. This created an Inhuman race of superpowered beings that lived in isolation and didn't trust humans. Have you seen what's going on in the world lately? I can't say I blame them too much. Hashtag topical, hashtag why the heck am I using hashtags in an episode. Anyway, we received the Inhumans origin as a backup story in Thor issue 146. The story was rightfully called The Origin of the Incomparable Inhumans. In this story, we see that at the beginning of the Kree Skull War, which was millions of years ago by Earth's concept of time, the Kree established a station on the planet Uranus, which was a strategic position between the Kree and Skrull empires. While working at the station, they learned that sentient life on Earth had genetic potential due to the fact that Celestials had messed with their genetics. Intrigued by this, the Kree began to do experiments on Earth's cavemen, aka Homo sapiens. They did this for two reasons, one, to investigate possible ways of circumventing their own evolutionary stasis, and two, to create a powerful mutant race of soldiers which they in turn could use to fight against the scrolls. However, even though their experiments were successful in creating a strain of humanity with incredible abilities, the Kree abandoned their experiment because of a genetic prophecy that predicted that experiments would eventually lead to an anomaly that would destroy the Kree's supreme intelligence. But what happens to the abandoned test subjects? Well, the Inhumans, as they would be dubbed, went on to create their own society in a city named Adelan. This city was hidden away from the rest of humanity, and Adelan quickly became far more advanced than the normal human world, as the Inhumans' genetic modifications made them vastly superior superior in intelligence. I should also note that as time went on, they engineered their city so that it could be picked up and moved whenever it was discovered, so that no one would ever know where Adelan truly is. So yeah, they have a flying city. Eventually, an Inhuman geneticist named Randak was able to recreate the Terrigen Mist. The Terrigen Mist gives the Inhumans superhuman abilities and is given to them when they come of age. But it isn't all rainbows and gumdrops. The Mist can also cause genetic damage and deformities. This caused the Inhumans to adopt a long-term selective breeding process to try to minimize the effects of these mutations. Or to put it more plainly, they had to be smart about doing the freaky deaky. Another interesting fact is that Inhumans don't believe in marrying outside their race. That's right, they're a bunch of racist bastards. However, there's always that one rebel in the family, and in the case of the Inhumans, it was a member of the royal family named Crystal, who ended up marrying Quicksilver. Something she only gets away with because she's a member of the royal family. Gotta love hypocrisy. Now normally this is the point of the episode where I would go into story arcs and briefly give you their evolution through comics over the years. But with this being the history of an entire group of people, why not change it up a bit? Instead, we're going to give you all a brief rundown of each member of the royal family. That way, you can familiarize yourself with the characters and understand their family tree a bit. So, let's get to it. The royal family consists of the Inhumans' leader and king, Black Bolt, his wife Medusa, Black Bolt's cousins Karnak, Gorgon, and Triton. Then there's Medusa's younger sister, Crystal, Black Bolt's genius yet insane brother, Maximus, and of course their loyal protector and pet, Lockjaw, who is an Inhuman dog with the power of teleportation. Now let's take a look at them individually, starting with Black Bolt. His real name is Blackagard Boltagon, and his parents were leading geneticists and the king and queen of Adelan. Black Bolt was subjected to the Terrigen Mist when he was still just an embryo, but it caused Blackagard to be born with powers far greater than that of a normal Inhuman. In fact, while still just an infant, he had energy manipulating abilities that he couldn't even control yet. One of the energy manipulating abilities he had was quasi-sonic energy from his voice, 
which has massive destructive potential. Having such power at such an early age caused the community to fear him, so his parents placed him inside of a soundproof chamber and gave him an energy harnessing suit. Over time, his dad taught him how to control his powers, and Black Bolt was eventually allowed to return to society as just a young man. However, after his younger brother Maximus was found to be in cahoots with the Kree, Black Bolt stopped him by using his quasi-sonic scream to crash the Kree ship. But unfortunately, a crash landed on the Parliament, killing Black Bolt's parents and making Black Bolt the new king of the Inhumans. That's a rough way to assume the Iron Throne. Next, we have the Inhumans Queen Medusa. Her parents were Quellen and Amber. Quellen was the brother of Rinda, the wife of King Aegon, aka Black Bolt's dad, technically making Medusa and Black Bolt cousins, which is freaking gross considering they're married. Nothing like some good old fashioned incest. No, that's nasty. Yeah, I'm still looking at you, Game of Thrones. Anyway, Medusa's parents chose to expose her to the Terrigen Mist when she was just a young girl, which gave her a long, thick head of red hair that she can use as a fifth appendage. When Medusa was young, she began visiting her cousin Black Bolt while he was still quarantined over the power of his voice. Although he couldn't talk to her without destroying something, Medusa learned to communicate with him by using a special sign language. This created a serious bond, and after a while, the two fell in love. When Black Bolt was later released from his cell, at the age of 18, the two remained romantically involved and eventually got married. Next up, we have Karnak, who like I said earlier, is Black Bolt's cousin. His brother Triton was exposed to the Terrigen Mist as a young infant, but unfortunately it gave him green scales. So Karnak's parents begged him not to be exposed to the Terrigen Mist. And wouldn't you know it, he listened, and instead learned martial arts. Karnak was also put into his father's religious seminary in the Tower of Wisdom, and while there, he was taught many different physical and mental disciplines until the age of 18. His overall abilities are awesome, but I'll get into that later. Now let's talk about his older brother Triton. Like I said, Triton was exposed to the mutagenic Terrigen Mist when he was very young. A year old to be exact, and when he emerged, he was a green-skinned fish man of sorts with a ton of aquatic mutations. This made him incapable of breathing air, and he was instead raised in a specially designed alcove on the shore of Adelan. Triton's mother, a biologist, began to study the ocean and its life so she could better understand and take care of her son. Eventually, a breathing apparatus was designed to enable Triton to survive and breathe out of water. But let's move on to Gorgon. He's the only son of architect Korath and archivist Melina, who were leading citizens of Adelan. Korath was the brother of Agon, who was the king of the Inhumans until his untimely death, making Black Bolt and Gorgon cousins as well. I know having all these names thrown at you can be confusing, but stay with me, guys. There's also Medusa's younger sister, Crystal. She has some pretty cool powers, which I'll touch on in a bit. But some other cool things to know about her is that she briefly joined the Fantastic Four and as I mentioned earlier, married Quicksilver. However, after Quicksilver stole the Terrigen Mist from the Inhumans during the House of M storyline, Crystal had their marriage annulled according to the Inhuman law for his betrayal. Next in line, we have Black Bolt's evil brother, Maximus. Maximus was exposed to the Terrigen Mist when he was an infant, but his powers didn't develop until he was much older. He later became an evil genius and often plots against his royal family. Lastly, we have Lockjaw, the royal family's dog. He's an inhuman dog that looks like a giant bulldog. When exposed to the Terrigen Mist, he was granted teleporting abilities. Since Lockjaw was a puppy, he has been a loyal servant and protector of the royal family. He's been shown to protect his friends by any means necessary. An extra fun fact about Lockjaw is that he was actually the Fantastic Four's pet for a while. Anyway, that should be a pretty good overview of the royal fam. And before we get into powers and abilities, how about some Verve? Created by the team over at Crunchyroll, Verve spelled VRV is an awesome new digital platform that gathers channels from a bunch of your favorite content creators and puts them all in one place. And to give our audience a chance to check it out for themselves, Verve is offering you guys a free 30-day ad-free trial of the Verve Combo Pack just by clicking the link in the description below. That's a full month to watch a ton of great content, like Mondo's new series Last Man which focuses on Richard Aldana, a tough guy and wannabe boxer who finds himself thrown into a fight that he doesn't understand against powerful dark forces. New episodes of The Last Man release on Fridays at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And though it's definitely not a show for kids, from the first episode it leaves you needing to know what happens next. Verve also features other great content like Rooster Teeth's Anime Ruby, which is one of my personal favorites, and Attack on Titan Season 2 subbed on the Crunchyroll channel or 100% dubbed in English on the Funimation channel. And if that's not enough, the combo pack also gives you unlimited access to a ton of additional content from channels like Machinima, Cartoon Hangover, and now Shudder 2. All ad-free in 1080p. Verve is available for multiple devices, so you can pretty much watch it from everywhere. Not to mention you can create your own watch list and comment on videos while you feast your eyes on your favorite shows. So don't wait, download the Verve app now on your iPhone, iPad, Android, or even your Xbox or PlayStation by clicking the link in the description and get your free 30-day ad-free trial of the Verve Combo Pack. Get awesome content and support the creators we all know and love. 
You can thank me later. The Inhumans King Black Bolt has many powers like cosmic awareness, ambient particle and electron harnessing, matter and energy manipulation, and so on. But his main ability is his quasi-sonic scream. The slightest peep from Black Bolt's mouth is powerful enough to level an entire city. Because of this, Black Bolt can never utter a sound unless he wants to destroy whatever is right in front of him. It's also how he got his nickname, the Silent King. His wife Medusa is most known for her red, thick, long hair. She can control each strand of her hair as countless appendages, which are comparable to steel wire. She also has the psychokinetic ability to wield her hair as she sees fit. With concentration, she can move or shape her hair in any way she can think up. Then there's Karnak, who was never exposed to the Terrigen Mist, but instead became a master martial artist. He was specifically trained to be able to find the weakness or a fault in any object, person, or idea. By doing this, he can take down opponents that are much stronger than him. Karnak's brother Triton, who as I mentioned earlier was turned into like a fish man when exposed to the mist, was also given a ton of superhuman abilities like super strength, speed, stamina, agility, reflexes, and durability. He also has aquatic vision and can breathe underwater and survive the great pressures of the sea. Next is Gorgon. The mist caused Gorgon to develop hooved feet and a very powerful lower body. In fact, his legs are so powerful that a single stomp can create shockwaves strong enough to disable his opponents. He's just very strong in general, and with his low center of gravity, it's almost impossible to move him off his feet. Medusa's sister Crystal has the power to manipulate the four elements, air, water, earth, and fire, which makes her pretty dangerous. Then Black Bolt's brother Maximus has the ability to control the minds of others. He can actually control multiple minds at the same time which is pretty scary considering he's an evil genius. Lastly, there's Lockjaw, who as I mentioned earlier, has the power of teleportation, but also super strength and super smell. Not to mention, he's adorable. I don't care, it's 2017 and a grown man can say adorable. As for reading recommendations, check out Inhumans by Paul Jenkins and Jay Lee, Uncanny Inhumans Volume 1 Time Crush, The Inhumanity Collected Edition, All New Inhumans Volume 1 Global Outreach, and Inhumans Volume 1 Genesis. First up for Wednesday, September 13th, we have New Superman Issue 15. This is an awesome creative title that gives you a very cool spin on the classic Superman and Justice League. I highly recommend it. Now we have Weapon X Issue 8. All I have to see is Hulk with Wolverine claws on the cover and I'm buying it. It's that simple. Next we have Venomverse Issue 2. The Poison's relentless campaign against the Venoms continues, and Spider-Man is amongst the first to fall. And finally, we have Dark Knight's Metal Issue 2. As Superman and Wonder Woman hunt for a missing ally, Batman investigates a mystery spanning centuries. And that's going to bring another episode of Variant to a close, but remember, if you guys want to donate to the Red Cross or Team Rubicon for Hurricane Harvey or Hurricane Irma, we put the links for that in the description below. But as always, remember you can head over to VariantComics.com for all things Variant. But we'll see you guys next time when we talk about all things comics.